I'm trying to make a habit of recording into Discord as well. And uh, yeah, I have a, a live streaming channel going as well on a website called Twitch where we get like, you know, somewhere between like one and five viewers per podcast. I don't know where they come from, but we get them. So um, yeah, it's an interesting uh, little experiment. Nice. Seeing how much content we can get out of one uh, podcast. So anyway, um, I'll, I'll jump into it. I'll give you a little intro, have a little, and uh, yeah, we'll have a chat. We've got like 40 minutes now, so we're all good. Perfect. We're all good, because I know you said that uh, you were going to struggle to um, get the answers in concisely, so you just talk as however you'd love to talk. I can do it concisely, but I can't get it all in 20 minutes. You know, that's uh, that's like talking about one sentence. Yeah, no, no, all good. We've got 40 minutes. We can go for 40. We can go for 38 minutes. Not nice. at all. Awesome. Well, welcome back to the Coaches to the Moon podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sitting here today with Lee Jane Woodgate. Very, very excited. So Lee is a business growth advisor. She is the author of two international best-selling books, trailblazers and awakening and uh, she's also the host of the business sex and being human podcast on the bondi radio show is it a radio show is it a podcast it is a radio show which is actually dissolving and um it's moving from a radio show straight into a podcast so there are a few changes that are happening on the channel so yeah perfect timing to bring that into the world as well fantastic well you know this whole way of just self-managed self-made uh content is taking over the world right taking over tv and and radio i actually had a guest on two or three weeks ago who's who is a uh she does public relations and helps people to get into traditional media because so many people have access now to modern you know phones internet that when someone is on the tv you really notice it because <laughs> uh exactly like what have they done to get on the tv because like no one's on tv anymore so um yeah, she said that it's actually really helping a lot of people grow. So mm-hmm. but uh, so that's a really interesting concept. But anyway, Lee, thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm really excited to talk today about kind of your approach to helping people grow their businesses and also just kind of become more in alignment with themselves because I know that you believe they're not mutually exclusive. They're one in the same. So yeah, thank you for being here in a roundabout way. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I'm a business growth advisor, leadership mentor, and the founder of an online business school called Anatogy. Mm-hmm. And Anatogy, the name was built out of the concept of three important pillars that I that I refer to in everything that I teach, which is intuition, nature, and strategy. And I specifically work with purpose-driven entrepreneurs and conscious leaders, and I enable them to be themselves and pretty much monetize their innate gifts. Um, I help them to build multi six figure to seven figure businesses. And I've been in the patriarchy for the past 20 years. I've been supporting men at the top. And my mission is to bridge the gap between power and leadership. So after spending 20 years uh, working with men, I decided it was time to shift into a more aligned place. I often got comments from the men about how I came up with strategic plans that was so intuitively fueled. And it would actually cause quite a bit of frustration because I was able to come up with solutions really quickly when people were moving around things in a very roundabout way. And so I got to a point where I felt like I was pushing things uphill and I really wanted to do things my way. And Mm -hmm. So Anatogy Business School was born. I work with integrating soul's intelligence into the human technology. So I work with the mental body, emotional body, physical body, spiritual and energetic bodies. And then I... I I get clarity on who the actual human being is. So we work on tailored business strategies for each and every individual. And I ensure that they're aligned to the cycles of nature. So I pay attention to the seasons that that we're in. I have a look at the moon. I work with the galaxies. I work with the internal cycles of the human being. And we bring this into an integrated state so that people can show up as they are and build profitable and sustainable businesses that create long lasting impact in the world. So that is it in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, there's actually two or three things in there that I had planned to chat with you about and unpack a little more. 
because when you're throwing words around like human technology and uh, that sort of thing, you know, I was bewildered by that phrase. Don't know what it means. I'd love to know more about it. And the first one I'd love to unpack is um, purpose-driven entrepreneurs. So could you just give us a bit of a, you know, idea of what that means to you and why you work with these people? Mm -hmm. So... I don't just work with purpose-driven entrepreneurs. I work with purpose-driven entrepreneurs who are conscious. There is quite, I've noticed quite a huge distinction between those who are on purpose and they want to do good things in the world and they're aligning often to the 17 global goals, which were set by the UN a few years ago to bring equality, to make sure that, you know, poverty is dissolved, that everyone is educated. And human beings can be purpose-driven and they, and, and they can have a desire to do amazing things in the world that are that is focused on transforming human um, humanity and the planet. It's another thing to have high levels of consciousness. It is another thing to be highly aware of who you are as a human being and how you respond to the rest of the world and yourself. And so when I talk about the human technology, it is about having the deepest awareness of how your mind functions, how you respond to the world from an emotive perspective, how your body, there is so much wisdom in our bodies that is stored that most people don't tap into. You know, we're often paying attention to what's happening externally, but we're not coming into the wisdom of who we are as human beings. And then obviously we've got our energetics and then people have got their spiritual beliefs, whatever those are. So to be purpose-driven for me is about looking at a problem and having a desire to solve it. To be conscious is having a look at your own human technology, these elements that I refer to, and how to integrate those in a way that you can be on purpose in aligned with who you truly are, not in aligned with just, not just in alignment with the actual purpose and the problem that you're solving, but to do things in the easiest way possible with the most flow possible, you know, often business coaches have and, and business advisors have a specific strategy of this is the way that you do it, A to Z, these are the steps. I'm not interested in working in that way. I don't certify people. I don't give them a diploma. You don't come through the University of Anadji Business School. You come to me, you show me who you are. I enable you to go out, be yourself and make lots of money and create huge amounts of impact there is no one strategy for for any human beings because from a dna perspective we are created differently mm. and so i see who the human being is using various tools and enable them to bring their to realize the purpose that they're that they're here for yeah wow yeah that's really interesting for you to differentiate between people who are they're all trying to do a good thing and some are conscious and some are not. And it's cool to be able to have such a clear idea of the people who you work with best and why you want to work with them. There was a thing in there that you mentioned, which I'm really on board with, which was uh, kind of doing things with ease and flow rather than just grind and hustle. Cause I was a bit of a grinder hustler when I was younger and then realized that it didn't actually get me very far at all. It just kind of made me think I was doing well. Uh, but ease and flow is a beautiful, beautiful um, kind of way of living. And I'm curious because you came through all the corporate life, you, you know, private yachts and all this side of things like you were talking about before. Now you're in the ease and flow coaching side. Was there anything that actually crossed over from these big patriarchal elitist jobs to the coaching you, you now do? Anything that you can apply from the old world to the new world? Mm, that is a beautiful question. And my, my ability to multitask and hold a lot of energy and hold a, um, hold a lot of projects is huge. And I definitely put that to all of the work that I've, that I've done previously. So in events management, in manufacturing and distribution, in finance, insolvency, accounting, ethics, human resources, culture, 
and in various different organizations, not for profit, and as you say, working on yachts for five years, working on yachts for five years had me learning about how to really be in tune with nature. You know, when you've got a high-end client who is paying 50 grand a day to be on the yacht and they want things a certain way, you're contending with being on the ocean and you're having to present whatever it is that you are delivering to them, whether it be a cup of coffee or a beautiful lobster or a party for guests that are coming on board, you're having to deliver it with elegance whilst contending with nature, because you, you've got not just the moving parts of all of the human beings that you've got on the yacht, you've got the movement of the water as well. And then you're working with, sometimes there's rain and there's storms, and you've got these people that want thing a certain, things a certain way, and you're having to adapt to that. So being in that environment, and then coming into corporate, which is very much about constantly pushing shit uphill, if I may say, rushing it, getting the job done, being able to transfer from yachts into corporate and not having all of the resources to be able to deliver was a beautiful transition. And then to come into the world of even less resources of purpose-driven human beings who are coming in at startup, a lot of them transferring over from corporate, coming from these, these jobs where the money was there and there was a sense of safety and security, then having to come to the space where they know nothing about anything other than I want to apply my skills and be purposeful, we're working with even less resources and so much more fear because what they're coming into is trust. And so it's been this beautiful transition of holding a lot, contending with a lot of chaos, you know, toilets not working on private yachts, bilge tanks bursting, um, mm, people vomiting all over the place, you know, like real crises moments to then the crises of corporate, which is I'm going to move up the ladder and I don't care who's in my way. I'll stab you and then the next person will stab you too. Being in that and contending with those kind of politics mm. and being over here where we're existing in a world now where we're going through the greatest transition of humanity with everything that's happened with COVID, where people are really realizing, you know, it's all on me and nothing is actually safe and secure. I am literally the only person that can create a beautiful life for myself. I could lose my job at any point in time. The system can go to shit at any point in time. The government can change the rules and regulations at any point in time. There is the sense of unsafety in the world. And people are really realizing that whew, if they don't come into their own sovereignty and make decisions from an aligned place, then nothing's going to work. So yeah, this transference of holding big space, um, has has moved through every every step of my life. Everything has brought me to where I am now. You know, at any point in time, I'm building and growing 20 businesses. That's 20 businesses with 20 ideas, with 20 human beings that are all going through their own fears, their own technological upgrades. And you know, it's big, it's big energy to hold. But I do it on my terms. I take two days off a week. I have a nap when I desire to. I set my meetings when I choose to. I work in alignment with my own my own moon cycle. So there are days when my energy is a little bit lower. There are days when I'm fully expansive. So I know, you know, that when I begin to bleed, I'm in high energy. This is a time to launch things. And so I very much work in alignment with the cycles and I do things on my term and terms and mm. it's working. I feel like that would be a very difficult strategy to get across in the corporate world, uh, suggesting we, we go by the cycles of the moon, that kind of thing. And that's why I was really curious because you, you, you've done so well in every different one of these avenues. And what you just said was so interesting about just having to pretty much whatever industry you're in, ready the ship, just keep the ship steady. Uh, not that you're a skipper, but, you know, keep no matter what's happening around you, just be able to adapt and take control and far out has the last year done that to us, right? 
Oh uh, my gosh, yes. I, I was, I was, um, I had a very unique perspective on that one because two in- industries I have always worked in, one was online, one was hospitality. And so the digital world went nuts and got so much better and hospitality just went to absolute shit. And it was a, a funny perspective because I was seeing the two things I loved and worked in just be kind of battling for my attention in the middle. And then it became the obvious choice which wanted to follow. And luckily I had the skills and was able to adapt because I'd kind of prepared without knowing. And like you said there, uh, you know, we, we were all realizing it's all on us, not on anyone else. And that's a tough lesson to learn when you learn it too late. Mm. Actually, let's talk about restaurants. Sorry, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go, you go, you lead the way. Well, I know that your dad was a chef. Yeah. And, and uh, I was a chef for a long time. And, and when we spoke on the phone, you gave me this really cool analogy comparing restaurants to kind of how you work with businesses. Mm. Um, c- could you take us through that analogy again and kind of just let the people out there know how like, the inner workings of a, a hospitality venue can actually be mirrored in other industries? Well, first of all, I'm going to bring the nation component in, you know, it's about who we choose to work with. And in a restaurant, you're, you're, you're attracting a certain clientele, you know, first of all, the levels of restaurants, and then across, across the way from a horizontal perspective, it is the kind of food that you're serving. And it's the experience that you're bringing to life. So number one, from a nation perspective, not everybody gets to have a seat at the table. You know, there is space for a certain group of people and you get to choose who sits at your table. As we know, sharing a meal with someone is a very intimate experience. And so I really look at from this niche and component, do I want to sit at the table with you? Do I want to look you eye to eye and actually share an experience with you? Eating is an extremely sensual experience and I'm a very sensual human being. I'm, You know, most days I feel like I'm tripping on acid because I, the way that I see things, the way that I, you know, experience the nature and objects and things and light around me is, is quite profound. I have a very strong sense of smell as well. So I'm constantly being activated the way that I taste things. I'm quite blown away by how food sits in my mouth and how it moves through my body and how it lights me up. So everything is quite a heightened experience with me. And so when I talk about, you know, restaurants and being in business, often people, there are two things that they do. Often people build a brand, but don't have a business. So they've got no systems in place. They've got no sales and processes in place. They haven't looked at the profitability of things. They've brought their creativity through and they've built this beautiful brand that looks good on the outside. And so from a restaurant perspective, beautiful door beautiful entrance. But in the background, we don't have a chef. We've got no waiting staff. There are no tables. There are no chairs. There's no desire. And we don't know what the fuck's on the menu. These businesses don't create profitability. Then there are the businesses that want to get everything sorted out in the background, but they've got no door. So we don't know who they are. We don't know what they do. We don't know who they serve. And we don't know what the outcomes are. But they feel really good because they've set everything up and it looks really beautiful and everything smells amazing. And the the, the menu is amazing. The team is fantastic, but we've got no cash flow. So we don't know how we're going to, we don't know how we're going to pay the team. We've got no invitation because there's no sign on the front door to say, hey, this is what we do. And there's so much beauty in the background. And so we've got to balance it. We've got to look at all of the aspects of business. Who are you working with? What is it that you actually want to do in the world? What sign are you putting on your restaurant door? How do you want to run this kitchen? How do you want to run the floor? What kind of people do you want to have to serve? So I love looking at it this way because it's experiential. You know, building and growing businesses is an experiential thing. It's not just about... I want to do this thing for freedom to get shit and get shit done. It's not about that. It's about 
when you choose to be an entrepreneur, you choose to be in the greatest experience of life because you are choosing your self-expression. And nobody is telling you that these are the KPIs. This is the person that you've got to work with. This is the person that you've got to manage. You've got to adapt your personality and your character to them to make sure that you align with the culture of the organization. You set the tone. And so you get to be in the deepest creativity. And I love restaurateurs because it's about being in the deepest creativity. Chefs are normally mad and they're in their own, you know, they're in their own world of creativity. You're working with you're working with the science of food, you're working with beauty, and you've got a timing issue going on here, because if you don't cook things at the right speed and put the love into the the meal and serve it up in a way and have the right team member to get it to the table on time, things go to shit. You don't get your reviews, no Michelin hats for you. And it's the same thing in business. It is all about the timing. It is all about your creativity. It's all about the people that you choose to work with. And it's all about your alignment. You know, it's like uh, often people call it a carbonara. Don't call it a carbonara if you're going to put ham in it. It's not a carbonara. You know, they're... It's one thing to adapt things yeah. and create them in your way. It's another thing to get over creative. And often entrepreneurs want to get over creative. Yeah. Keep it simple. Entrepreneurship is complex enough. You don't have to complexify it with over being over creative, which often happens in restaurants and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I think, there's, um, you know, we're coaches. I work with a lot of coaches. There's a really clear path that you've just drawn for me or a connection between beginner restaurateurs and beginner coaches in that, you know, a, a chef with his first head chef job will try and please everyone with an enormous eclectic menu where the most confident chefs will say, you come in, I'm going to choose what you eat. And so you see it with coaches a lot. When I talk to a beginner coach and I say, who do you help and what do you help them with? And they talk for 45 minutes uh, because they can't say that concisely. We know that that's going to be an issue. So straight up, you know, uh, simplicity is exactly, you know, one massive, massive part. And I think the other thing that you've, um, you've talked about, because you've, you've hit on a few, like heaps of the spots I want to talk to you about today. And it's been hilarious. Like every question I had prepared, you just answered it without me even needing to. But one thing that I'd love to know, because simplicity in business, um, you know, being able to manage the systems and the creativity together, all this stuff, really, really crazy important. You do speak about uh, your three pillars of a sustainable business, though, and you've spoken about the, um, you know, integrating nature into your, you know, your daily life and working with cycles and energy and, you know, you, you like working with the moon and galaxies and whatever fits best for you. You've also spoken about, you know, aligning your strategy to your own individual systems. But the thing that I really loved as well was the balance of masculine and feminine energy in business. And that's something you talk about a lot. And when you explained to me on the phone, it wasn't the way I expected you to explain it. So could you tell us why you believe the balance of masculine and feminine energy is so important in a sustainable business? Mm. So the masculine culturally is to hold and provide the masculine is to create structure and direction the feminine is to support and surrender and trust and come in with softness the feminine births you know the feminine has the ability to to grow human beings inside of her. And what's happened in the world is women have become like men and men have become like women. And it's not about man or woman. It's not about equality and diversity. This is not actually the question that, that this new earth that we're birthing is, is about. 
It is about the energies. It's about making sure that there is structure and there is order. The purpose of structure is so that you can have all the spontaneity in the world. If you don't have a sales plan and an idea of what it is that you're selling at what point in time through the year, if you don't have a price point for those things, if you haven't managed your budget, your spending planning, If you haven't looked at your finances from a grander perspective, you've got no structure, you've got no support systems in place. If you don't have any of your SOPs drawn up, you don't know what steps you're taking. These are all very masculine things that are necessary in business. The feminine, though, the feminine energy is about trust. It's about faith. It's about softness. It's about power. It's about being able to birth things on the spot without thinking our way through it. As uh, the feminine energy is so incredibly potent that it goes beyond the mind. The masculine energy is about the mind. It's about the pragmatics. It's about the intellectual approach to things. And so if we're not bringing in that energy, as well as the softness and this trust and this surrender, this being in the experience of life, you know, it's the beingness, it's the, the, the energy of receiving, you know, if we look at from a physical perspective, um, a, a masculine penis and a female vagina vagina, you know, there's a plugging in that happens and the, 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 the feminine is receiving and the masculine is giving, you know, and, and if we look at it from this perspective, we've got to remember that in business as well, you know, there has to be that openness, that surrender to receive. This is what increases the capacity from a financial perspective. And then that masculine to give, to drive forward, to bring the energy in. And this is what creates the union in business. This is what creates that flow and that sense of grace and that sense of ease. So it's not about diversity um, and equality. It is about balance. It is about harmonizing. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. What matters is have you fully integrated your masculine into yourself and have you fully integrated your feminine into yourself? And the women who have got to the top have put the pants on and have tried to be men please stop it. We've lost elegance in the world. We've lost grace. We, if we look at the goddesses of the world, they were exquisite and they moved with grace and they were in their potency and they didn't climb over others to get there. They just knew that their seat was right there on the throne. And the, 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 the men have also, there are some that have softened too much Yes, it's great to have a beautiful open heart and to wear your heart on your sleeve, but remember who you are. Bring that masculine energy in. Come into your potency. Get those structures in place. And then business works with absolute flow. I was wondering when you, uh, I read that your radio show was called Business, Sex and Being Human how you would amalgamate all those things, but you've just done it in one answer. And we've, you know, we've not had penis and vagina talked about on the podcast too often, but that analogy was freaking incredible. That's so, so clever. And it makes so much sense that you've got to open yourself up to receive and also be there uh, ready to drive forwards. And um, I think so many people in the coaching space, the internet space are down one line or the other really, really hard down one line or the other. A lot of the people who, you know, when I'm doing digital marketing and I'm looking for audiences to follow, you kind of have two different camps there. And it's either I'm following people like Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone who work 18 hours a day and never sleep and just buy, buy, sell, sell. And then down the other half, you have the people who follow, you know, literally the Dalai Lama and um, William Whitecloud and all these beautiful, more spiritual, super conscious creators and that sort of thing. And rarely do I manage to create good results um, from someone who crosses both paths because everyone seems to be on one or another. Do you think, uh, Lee, that people can learn to do this like over time or do they need to be born 
with an equal amount of masculine, feminine? Are we born with an equal amount? Uh, is it something you can create over time or are you kind of just stuck with the way you, you are? Most certainly not. I mean, when we when we landed on planet Earth, you know, the, the moment that we came into the world, we were given all of the tools required to function as a high performing human being. Unfortunately, though, we've been born into a society with a whole bunch of things that just don't work. And this is the power struggle. Keep the people small for as long as possible. Don't let them know how technologically advanced they are. As human beings, we are extremely advanced, yet we haven't been given the opportunity to tap into all of these faculties on a high level. And we've been working with generational trauma for many, many years, and it's unresolved trauma that continues to get passed on to the next generation and the next generation. There are unresolved matters that weren't spoken about in families, that weren't acceptable, things that happened, things that haven't been, things that people haven't been educated about, but because of shame and guilt, the shame and guilt of sharing what had happened in the background, people keep their mouths shut and it gets stored in their cells and it changes who they are as human beings and they put their walls up and they come into protection mode and they decide that they've got to be independent and they really step into their masculinity I mean you see me now but I was brought up by a male my mother left when I was two years old and my father was one of the first men in South Africa in South Africa to gain custody of a child and so I was brought up by a man And I was brought up by a man who was brought up by a police officer who was barely ever there in England, you know, and he was born into the war. And so my father sustained huge amounts of trauma that was never discussed. And he just moved through it and held on to things. And that got passed on. That got passed on to me. You know, there were moments in time where dad responded in ways that, he is not happy about and it created huge amounts of trauma in my life that I only resolved three years ago when I was 36 years old and you know this is the thing we do have a balance of masculine and 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 feminine energy naturally because we are nature just as you know just look around look around at the nature and how it's harmonized and how it's balanced and you don't get the lion chatting to the deer to say hey maybe if you don't move out of my way you're going to get eaten it gets sorted out if you're not awake and you're not paying attention damn straight you're going to get eaten Damn straight, the next person is going to come and override you. Open your eyes. There are lions out there. There are deers out there. There are cats, you know, there are birds. There are creatures all over the place and they're they're working in different ways. Look at the trees, look at the plants, look at the flowers, look at all of the botanicals. Look at the way that the, the, the water moves. The wave doesn't say to you, hey, matey, if you don't pay attention, I'm going to come over and smash you and you're going to fall under. No, you've got to pay attention. Have a look at the currents. Look at the tides. Can you see the swell? And do you have the capacity to harmonize yourself with nature or are you going to get dumped? You don't need a sign on the beach that says dangerous areas, not lifeguard protected. For God's sake, we've all got eyes. You can all have a look at the water and clearly see today is not a good day to go into it. Yet, as as a human race, we've got signs everywhere that create fear, that take people out of their own experience of life to pay attention to what's going on. There are road signs that say, don't trust your tired self, have a rest. As opposed to, are you feeling tired? The signs do not enable people to think about themselves. But first of all, if you're bloody tired, don't get into a car. I mean, it's just basic common sense, right? So yes, we are born with a balance of masculine and feminine energy, yet we are born into a society that doesn't work. Currently, it doesn't work. And so the work that I'm doing with all of the humans that I support, we are, we're literally, we're literally, um, 
awakening humanity in the planet. You know, we, we wrote this book, Meet the Women Birthing a New Earth, last year in July, just as COVID hit and things were getting really intense. And we've just got to come back to our roots. It's really simple. Come back to our roots. Remember that we're on the most beautiful, most fun and exquisite planet that exists where we don't fly off because gravity holds us down. There is so much beauty around us, yet people go into their boxes and they forget that this is one big playground and we're here to have fun and we're here to love one another and support one another and be for one another and see and hear and hold one another. That's what we're here for and to have fuck tons of fun along the way. So, yes, we do have what we require. We just have to remember. What a perfect, perfect way to wrap that off because that was that whole answer was the entire spectrum from my perspective of masculine and feminine energy. It was structure. It was hardline. It was, it was friendly. It was nurturing. I just saw everything. And you've proven that uh, all of this is possible. And just to have fuck tons of fun is exactly what I'm trying to do. And it does get lost sometimes in business and strategy and politics and day-to-day life. But if we can all remember that a little bit more, uh, anyone listening, if we can all remember to have fuck tons of fun a little more in the wise words of Lee Woodgate, then uh, I think we'll all have a better time for it. Lee, I've got to cut it off, but thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. There were some astoundingly interesting answers, a lot of stuff to unpack. And I don't know how we're ever going to edit these videos down because uh, your answers take you to a place I never expected them to go to. So uh, thank you so much, Lee, for being on the podcast today. My absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, Alex. No, you are very, very welcome. And anyone uh, watching live, thank you so much. Anyone listening on Spotify will be back in a few days time with another episode of Coaches to the Moon. Until then, much love.